Hi, I'm Adam, the garage woodworker, and today I'm going to show you how I built this router table. My first idea for a router lift was to put a threaded rod along here and into the base so that if I when I turned it, it would raise and lower the router. I had a lot of issues trying to get it to stay in this hole. And then my first design I came up with was actually a mini scissor lift that I would just sit underneath and that would lift it up and down. I was then doing some research and found a um, router lift made by Shopbuilt. And I think I'm going to follow that. The way he did it was to have a piece of wire go to each side of the router so that when you turn a screw it would pull a piece of wood along a rail which would then pull the wire up forcing the uh, router to plunge. I'm going to do it, I'm going to tweak it a little bit but very similar idea. Okay, so I've already cut the uh, handles off because I thought the other way was going to work. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole through here and here and here and here so that I can then feed the wire through and the wire is then going to go through these um, parts here that were for the, uh, the guide rail and then they'll get pulled this way. So if you see like this, they'll get, they'll get pulled this way through a piece of wood and then down. Now these bits of wire that I'm using have this um, crimped ending on them so that they can't go th be pulled through the hole. Okay, so I ran the wires through these parts here, and there was just it was just way too hard to lift up to pull it up. Now what I've done is I've just um, Put a quick clamp on to hold it to this 2x4 here, just so I can test the mechanism. Now, my theory is that what I'll do now instead is that if you look here, this is where the router's going to go. If you sandwich between these two pieces of wood, if I drill two holes through here and feed the wire through the holes, this is very, very easy to pull down.
yeah. So what this is is a I was doing digging through my parts bin, and this is a um, a depth stop for a, a drill bit. That it's just you know it's just um, scraps that I don't use anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that to that length actually. I also have this little metal collet that I found in the parts bin as well. And then this is a, another stop for the, uh, the wire. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the wire through this, attach this on the end. So the wire through that, put that on after it, and then have a single piece of wire go through the other way and then it will just one one piece of wire will pull it down. Okay, let's now put the stop on this end. And I'm just gonna feed it through. I decided to add a metal tube into the piece of wood that the wire is going to get pulled down through. So I drilled a hole through the piece of wood with the biggest drill bit I had. It just wasn't big enough so I then put the metal tube inside the drill press and drilled it through again and that made the hole just big enough for it to fit in. I then epoxied this metal tube inside the piece of wood and attached the piece of wood into the router table. So the way this is going to work is I've put this wood through the hole and then I've put the wire through and put the screw the stopper onto the end of it. Now obviously I'll cut this rod down and I'm going to attach a wooden wheel to wind it up. But essentially, as you wind it, the wire wraps around the bar and the router loops. Right back down. Why the bar down? And that's it. You may be wondering why I call this the Kiss Router Lift, and that is because when I was in school, my shop teacher would always tell me to use the Kiss principle, which means keep it simple, stupid. Now when designing this router lift, I kept thinking of over the top ways to make it and when I found the router lift made by Shop Built, I just thought to myself how simple it is to just add a piece of wire and pull the router up. The next thing I had to do was put the hole in the top of the router table for the router bits to come through. To do this, all I did was put a straight bit into my router, turned it on, raised the router so that the bit would come through the top of the router table, and then used a Forstner bit to make the hole bigger. I then checked the straightness of the router bit, and it was perfect.
To change the router bit, I take off the front of the router table, raise the router lift all the way to the top, I then use a screwdriver to hold the spindle lock in place and use the wrench to loosen the collet. I then replace the router bit and re-tighten the collet. Next I'm going to build the router fence and to do that I'm just going to cut the base of the router fence in the front face of the router fence to length. I'll then screw them together and then add some triangle supports in the back. To attach the fence to the router table, I first measured in the distance from each end where the 2x4s are underneath. I then drilled two holes through the router fence and table. I took the fence off and then finished those holes through the router table. I then put a bolt in each hole and a T-nut underneath, tightened the bolts which then pulled the T-nuts in tight underneath the table. I made a couple of handles back here so I can adjust the fence. And I also cut out here so that I can use the original depth stop on the router. That's part two of my minor station build. 
Let me know in the comments what you think of my Ravalift. Next time I'm going to show you the dust collection, the Minosaur Station fence, powering the entire Minosaur Station and tool storage. Thank you for watching. Please consider maybe subscribing, hitting that like button. You can also follow me on social media and I'll have the links down in the description.